What's up guys? I felt inspired to uh, do a little bit of reading and a little bit of discussion from the book I recently picked up. Uh, the book is The Man in the High Castle, Philip K. Dick, who's just a kick-ass science fiction writer. Um, and the description here I'll read from the back. Um, Sci-fi, right? It's a, it's a novel. It's America in 1962. Slavery is legal once again. The few Jews who still survive hide under assumed names. In San Francisco, the I Ching is uh, as common as the Yellow Pages. The I Ching is that the ancient 5,000-year-old Chinese book, the Oracle. Right? Uh, it, you spell it I, I Ching, but it's pronounced I Ching. It's kind of an interesting topic, interesting book to look up, um, research. Anyway. Carrying on, um, the I Ching is as common as the Yellow Pages, all because some 20 years earlier, the United States lost the war. That's World War II, guys. Uh, and is now occupied by Nazi Germany and Japan. This harrowing Hugo Award-winning novel is the work that established Philip K. Dick as an innovator in science fiction while breaking the barrier between science fiction and the serious novel of ideas. Uh, in it, Dick offers a haunting vision of history as a nightmare from which it may just be possible to awake. So, right, it's an alternate universe, a parallel dimension. Um, and interestingly, it, within this book about a parallel dimension, people within the book are reading a book about another parallel <laughs> dimension where, where America, where the Allies won the war. So it's that old theme of the world within a world, never-ending story. The universe, guys, God is a great storyteller. We are storytellers. And that runs true for the Bible, all the great mythologies. Um, there's truth in there, but you got to dig for it. Um, and the thing that inspired me uh, was this little uh, couple, uh, one or two paragraphs here, um, page 111. I'll just pick it up. What would it be like, he wondered, to really know the Tao? Tao, T-A, Tao, T-A-W, T-A-O. The Tao is that which first lets the light, then the dark occasions the interplay of the two primal forces so that there is always renewal. It is that which keeps it all from wearing down. The universe will never be extinguished because just when the darkness seems to have smothered all to be truly transcendent, the new seeds of light are reborn in the very depths. That is the way. When the seed falls, it falls into the earth, into the soil, and beneath, out of sight, it comes to life. So that's the reading. Uh, and I want to, again, compare that to, I'm sorry if those that know, you know my thoughts already on this, the, the never-ending story, right? Uh, these periods where the darkness seems to win. Um, it's, it parallels the life of a star that goes supernova, right? Gravity someday wins. Uh, once that star starts producing iron in its core. And just when you think the darkness has won, supernova, revolution. But it takes these dark periods of humanity to draw people together again. And there's no doubt in my mind, we're in it. We're living a parallel universe right now, where Donald Trump has not only won, but the fact that the rest of the country lays down and won't fight back. I don't think it's real. Um, I can't believe that we have a country of, of fools, cowards, and quitters that accept that we don't have a democracy and now we're going to let the establishment destroy the country and destroy the planet we live on. Um, just my thought. And I think uh, the sign of the supernova was the great American eclipse last August, the sign of Leo. Um, it's, a, it's a magic trick. It, it all happens on a quantum level, so you'll never detect it with the human eye. But... Um, yeah, man, we're in it. <laughs> this is the revolution. I don't know. Um, if you ever wanted your name in the history books, well, now is the time, guys. We need new founding fathers and mothers, just men and women of, of, of energy and, and commitment. We cannot let uh, the establishment destroy the country. And that's the NRA. That's the Koch brothers. Uh, that's really both political parties. These are the forces that, that do not want change. And they've always been here. Um, so I'm kind of getting off topic there. Some random thoughts for you. Um, if you're not into science, I mean, at least it's fascinating. Guys, you look at other, you know, animal life forms and look at the past fossil record, think, well, we evolved from, 
lower life forms. Yeah, that's true. But deeper than that, we evolved from stars. All the atoms in our that make up our body and the, the world around us have to be created inside the furnace of a star. And so, guys, our, our universe, and I can't believe that science hasn't figured this out yet, is a star. One of many universes, the multiverse. Um, yeah. Lost my train of thought there. But no, understand the, the life cycle of a star. Not every star goes supernova. If they're big enough, they do. But I think this is um, the story of the universe. Periods of, of expansion and contraction. Uh, supernovas and black holes. We've been sucked into a black hole. Again, uh, solar eclipse, August last year. Um, it was exclusive to the United States. Had, hasn't, had, hasn't occurred since 1776, American Revolution. Um, so that works for you. Great. <laughs> Hope uh, maybe you pick up some Philip K. Dick. He also wrote uh, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep," which uh, was the source material for Blade Runner. Um, but they changed a lot of things for the movie. Apparently, I've not seen the the whole movie. Um, so that's it, guys. Signing off. Wish you well. Keep it up. Have a good day.